Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, as to not offend you with dust and small hairs, I'm giving this a little little dust off with the ultimate synth cleaning tool, a three-inch paintbrush. Today, uh, we'll talk for a little bit, not too long, about one of my favorite other Just Friends voice modes. I believe it's called Flume. Essentially, when we're in sound and cycle and have something going into the run jack. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've been in synth mode over I2C with Teletype. <clears throat> We're not in synth mode, we're in JF mode zero right now. But the cool thing is they can still talk to each other over I2C. So we'll go through a few really basic commands that I like to use in this mode for uh, controlling the pitch of the oscillator. Um, but essentially, yeah, the time knob is now like a coarse tune knob uh, for the oscillator. I'm sending the mix out right now to nearness just so we can monitor everything. In a minute, we'll split the voices out. But yeah, okay, so let's pick like a bass pitch. That's about as low as we'll want to go today. And so the first thing I want to show you on Teletype is that the uh, command jf.shift will adjust the offset of this course tune knob, the time knob. So if you were to say NB uh, 0 negative 2 to just set the scale. First number doesn't matter because that is the root note which will not do anything in the mode that we're in, but the second number is the scale and that's just going to quantize the values that we're going to be using here in a second. I think. <laughs> I think it still works outside of synth mode. If it doesn't, if I'm wrong, always free to correct me in the comments. So many of you are better at teletype and just friends than me. Okay. JF.shift NB5 changed the pitch. So that is going to be the basis of sequencing notes today. Um, so let's talk just for a second about what flume sounds like. Um, if you have not read them, the technical map for Just Friends is so wonderful and so rich with information. I'm not going to jump in and try and offer a half-hearted technical explanation of what Flume does. I'm just going to show you what it sounds like and how I use those sounds uh, in my music, and you can explore it on your own. But yeah, so with curve fully clockwise and ramp at noon, it's a very siny sound, right? Um, and as we go counterclockwise here, it will brighten. It's actually a wave shaper. We've got triangles, signs, and I think saw that it's kind of blending between. I'm gonna go back more toward the sine wave end of the spectrum just because we're not filtering this yet, so I don't wanna overwhelm you. But essentially, the outputs here are uh, stacked in a specific ratio that is being controlled by the intone knob here. And as I change this, that ratio will change. We go clockwise. It's a lot higher. It's a chord. If we go counterclockwise, same deal. It's like subsonic. And um, what I'm doing with cold Mac here is just using the plus five, negative five offset of the survey knob. This can be any knob though. You do not need an unobtainium cold Mac module to do this. Use a quadrat. Use anything that will send an offset uh, that's you know on a knob or a fader or whatever and that will work for this for this patch. Um, and when we've got all six oscillators running this offset knob is so fun to play with because check out the like slew how it starts to kind of break up and beat. Isn't that like, <laughs> makes me giggle, it's so good. 
So in all of the music we'll be making today, <clears throat> once the patch is set up, it's a very in the moment thing where I'll put my left hand on Intone and my right hand on Cold Mac here and kind of just play these knobs. I like to keep FM just a little bit north of noon. Cause it's just, it's kind of vanilla at noon. And then as we get a little bit further away, some of that frequency modulation is really beautiful. Okay, let's park it in kind of vanilla territory. And if I hit tab two times, we'll be into the tracker on teletype. Uh, I was terrified of the tracker for a long time, but I'm going to try and quickly explain what made me less afraid and help you use it as well. It's just a, a way to store numbers, values, and recall them to do whatever you want. So let's put, you know, let's do like zero, five, uh, seven, nine, and 11. These can be negative numbers too. And if we highlight where we want the end of our pattern to be and hold shift and hit L, now we've got a loop. Okay. I'm gonna go back to script one and let's say JF dot shift. Remember, because that'll change the pitch of the oscillator. NB, so use the scale that we set up earlier. And what number do we want to use? We're gonna say P dot next. And this is a command that will tell the pattern tracker to move forward one step and grab that number. It's either grab it and move forward or move forward and grab it, I can't remember. But grab a number and then use that here. So remember we can use function one, if you look at the bottom of your screen here, to fire off script one. And I say that because I'm gonna show you the tracker when I hit function one. See how it's moving forward? What do we have here? We had a nine. Oh, that can be tricky about the tracker. It doesn't write to the uh, place where the cursor is, it writes to the highlighted number, which is very useful, but I'm not smart enough to remember that always. Cool. I don't know if I like that nine. Let's try an eight. I like it, but I want it not next to the seven. Mm, eight there. 13 here? Nope. Yeah, that sounds kind of good. I'll just kind of mess with the sequence until I find something I like. I can always change it later. So let's call that series of numbers our sequence. And I'm gonna unplug this master mix um, because what's fun about this, what I like to do is start splitting out the individual voices uh, because this is very, very fun to control in the stereo field. Uh, so identity is gonna be like the root. Um, and I think what I wanna do is send that into sisters right next door. Come out of the low to a VCA. 
And let's come out of high. I may switch that to center here in a bit. But we'll uh, try that. All right, there's just something for your ears. That sounds cool. While we're here, uh, I want to take the all output from sisters into an attenuator and then try some different self modulation. Yeah, that sounds cool. What about the FM input? I liked that's good yeah that gives us some cool stuff to explore later okay next up let's skip to because the uh, you know the ratio increases as we go towards six uh, last night I was messing with this just one through four and it was less interesting. So two will go... Do I want to go straight in? I do. And I'm going to attenuate it. No. This one. Ever so slightly because this dude's going to go into Time Safari. And then straight out of there back into nearness. We're just using nearness to preview for now. Okay. And I want to take one channel of Zadar and use that for our amplitude. Um, and at this point we're going to jump back into script one and say trigger Output number one is it going to fire when the script fires. We may want some copies of that down the line, so let's just molt it. And send that into Zadar. Yeah, okay, cool. So did you hear that Wonka do amplitude thing fire off? That's good. Old time safari. Okay. So, right now, we don't have anything controlling the amplitude of uh, channels one and two on veils here. Let's fix that. Not that it was broken. Let's change it. And I think what we want to do, let's start by just grabbing the same trig. That's another thing we may think about down the line is like firing those envelopes off in a different manner. But for now, yeah, good. Okay, Time Safari, who I love and have infinite respect for, is partying a little bit too hard. We might want to just blunt the edge of that uh, crackly stuff. That again, I enjoy. We're going to come out of the half and half here. A102. Here we go. Great sounding filter. Thank you, Josh Mason. Okay.
let's take this opportunity to apply a little bit of modulation to sisters. We'll come out of Batumi into an attenuator. Go here. Yeah, cool. Remember, we're going to actually play this in a minute. We're just setting up envelopes and stuff. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Very happy with what's happening so far. We're gonna commit to it by sending it into Synapse. Synapse will be the ultimate destination for all of this stuff. So once we like something that we're previewing out of nearness, it gets to graduate over to Synapse. Uh, the next voice, let's grab four. No, let's grab five. Life is short. And this one... Okay, judgment call here, but I think what we're going to do is go into the last... Yeah, let's go straight into Data Bender. Which will give us a stereo signal. Which we're going to use to go into our other time safari. Some people are really great about creating aesthetically pleasing modular synthesizers with color-coded cables and modules arranged in a pleasing way. And I think that that is awesome. And I am not one of those people also, as you can tell. Um, I do a very poor job of that. So teach me. Out of time Safari into QPlus. And let's do a similar thing to what we did with Sisters. And come low pass. Yeah, oops. And high pass. Yee! And the other thing I want to do here is uh, say to. Dot, we're back on teletype, by the way. Trigger one. I want TXO to send a trigger. that is 750 milliseconds long. And that trigger is going to go to the pitch input of Time Safari, which will double its frequency. All right, so at this point, what we're gonna do is say we want the Metro to be 85 beats per minute. We're going to jump into the metro and say every six beats fire off script one. I'm just going to do that so that I can work here with pitch changes and triggers and all that kind of stuff happening without my direct and immediate attention. So we're no longer firing the script with function one. All right, data bender. Is it 50% mix? So the other place I want to apply modulation is to the A102.
Oh yeah, we can't hear that. <laughs> I'm readjusting it uh, and forgetting that it's going to Synapse. All we hear right now is the Time Safari. I'm pretty happy with how that's sounding. I do think I'm going to come out of TXO into QPOS here and back in script one. Actually, let's spin up a fresh script here and say uh, to.cv1 random voltage between negative two and two volt. Oops, that goes here. We did it. And then, uh, well, let's see what that sounds like first. So back in the metro, let's say probability 50. So there's a 50% probability that script two will run. And if it does, we'll hear the filter change on QPOS. especially if I plug it into the right input. Here we go. Yep. So now we have some timbral shift happening and uh, happy graduation to that sound. We're running out of inputs and I'm running out of time for making this video because it is lunch break right now. And this is what I do on my lunch break a lot of the time because it's highly therapeutic. Um, decisions, decisions. Let's do one more veils here. And uh, I'm going to go into Tromso here. I'm out of filters, which is a scary place to be because Tromso can, can get kind of rock and roll. Oh, gosh. I plugged this in the wrong place, guys. You probably saw that before I did. Okay. Tromso. Go middle here. Be kind of loud, so let's just turn it down. Maybe that's how we'll handle its apparent brightness. Yeah. I can either go into Nautilus now, which will create a stereo pair out of this. Finish that thought in a second. That sounds good. Or we can save Nautilus until the end of the chain. And I think I'm going to start there. I'm going to try that first. All right. We're in mostly happy territory with how all the voices are sounding. So we're going to now monitor out of Synapse. And we'll take that voice from Tromso and put it in input B here.
All right. Now, we need a trigger for changing qubits, synapses, uh, what we're listening to. So let's say probability 50. TRP2. We'll send that to the scatter input. So that's going to periodically change what we can hear. Cool, right? Okay, then let's go for the gold here and finish our patch by going into Nautilus, which I think I'm comfortable saying it's my favorite delay in Euro. I said it. But Mimeophone had earmuffs on when I said it because I also love Mimeophone. All right, let's clear that buffer real quick. Uh, the last thing I want to do is say TRP3. which will give us a clock out of teletype. And I do want to clock this. Oh yeah, that sounds nice. Go ping pong. We've got some saturation happening with the chroma effects. Go like 50% on the feedback. A lot of delay taps. Let's cut those back. Make it go real slow. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching this ridiculous patch come together. Um, I'm doing videos like this once every now and then, so if you if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe and it'll pop up. Um, and yeah. You know, tell me if I did anything wrong or that you disagree with or explained poorly, and I'll put it in the description for the video. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is just kind of stop talking, move the mic away. I'm going to jam for a few minutes until lunch break is over. You'll see me using the offset knob here and the intone knob up here, and maybe I'll do some timbral stuff to just kind of jam through this patch. I may change some things as we go. I don't know. Uh, hopefully it's fun. Hopefully it sounds good. If not, I'm sorry. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>